day of Super Week. Already, the mid laner is getting a bit of focus here as we start off the match. I don't think it's going to really change. Might see the Lulu as well. The Evelyn goes out, so Lee Sin is going to be already in the minds of both Dexter and Cruiser. Yeah, the Draven ban getting drawn. I'm a cutie pie. Had a really solid Draven game yesterday. It was actually when Jinx and Lucian had been banned away from mm -hmm. him. As soon as you push cutie pie up into the wall, he'll fight back. He doesn't want those assists. He wants all the kills he, he can gets get. the kills. <laughs> Bloodthirsty player. I mean, he is the one who will go in and KS, as we saw in our future yesterday. Indeed. If Kiwi Kid doesn't get there first, yeah, <laughs> steal it away even harder. Elise banned out as well. Still great steals coming from Elise, despite whatever hit she took. And it is going to be the Kha'Zix pickup, and Bing, that was an insta lock on Lee Sin for Dexter. And absolutely on Thresh. Yep. We've been talking a lot about the uh, quality of the North American Thresh players. There's a little bit of discussion on Reddit where they're just like, maybe it's just a problem with the champion. And it's like, well, you know, Thresh is a full utility, amazing support right. who can oftentimes do everything. And that is true. But I do not think that takes away from the mechanical complexity and the skill required to pull him out. The fact he's been out for a year, and now we're seeing these guys be good at that, just shows you the time investment these guys yep. put into that champion to reach that skill level. Golden Glue returning to what he knows in the mid lane. Oriana once again. Like he will have a better time hitting some ultimates here. Only going to have Dexter jumping around the fights. We do see a quadra kill coming from Golden Glue. And Kiwi Kid will get his Annie. So that's kind of the thing they look for as their initiation. If nobody else is there, they have Kiwi Kid for that. Yeah, that's a nice combo for them. It'll actually be on Kiwi Kid to line up the initiations for Golden Glue. And as soon as they have that kind of hard initiation shell for Dignitas, COG goes immediately to the Pope comp. Nidalee and Lucian are kind of classic pokers. Classic indeed. I'm gonna go for the old play on this one. They take the Lucian Thresh lane as well. We've mentioned before how much Double Lift and Aphromu struggled against that. So now they take it under their wing to be strong. Cutie Pie gonna lock in an Ezreal really quick for this composition. A little more yeah. big if ultimate with damage. Poke. Yeah. This could be a uh, very long range game. Ooh, with that Jace picked as well. He's Cruiser. been loving it. Rushing love it. BF Sword in that lane and then just gating everybody. I really enjoy watching Cruiser play his own champions. Yeah. He feels, he looks so much more comfortable when he is not forced onto Renekton and Giovanna. And I think he finds so much more success as well. Now it's on to see in the end. He's probably just going to end up going with Giovanna. Or Trundle. Trundle would be a pretty good thing here because it synergizes better with the poke comp. He really only has about four four competitive champions. Right. Uh, Rise, Shivana, Trundle, yeah. and Renekton. They pretty much canceled out the use of Rise in this one with the picks previously. And Trundle, like you said, the pillar will be good. Keep him at range. Keep the distance. We'll see teleports for the top laners. Steady and holding for now. Something that's been switching on and off for teams as the yeah. 2v1 is also been. Something that comes to light now with 4.4. Yeah, we're going to be seeing a lot of teleports as these guys continue to adapt to the patches. I, uh, I expect it's an interesting choice by CLG here. They're not going to be wanting to fight very much at all this game. Yet, Crumbs with the Jungle Kazix will want to fight actually fairly frequently. So even though Dignitas actually has a fair amount of like long-range damage, uh, they have much more wanting to really initiate strongly in these team fights, whereas Dignitas will really just be looking to work on their rotations yeah. and avoiding team fights. That's what the Nidalee Lucian Trundle is for. We'll have to see as the teams load into the game. Let's check your predictions as they are according to lolesports.com. 80% of you are giving this one to CLG, taking the first win of the day. Yeah, and it has not been the picture perfect week for CLG. They had the defeat to Cloud9 as well as a very sloppy game against Curse yesterday where they fell. But they do want to finish the Super Week on a strong note. They were locked into third before this, before their games even started this Super Week. Dignitas is also here playing for seeding and playing with, for, with some momentum. Scar is the coach, Golden Glue is the new mid laner. Trying to make it all work. Make it work indeed. With this composition, knowing that Golden Glue is kind of the factor that a lot of teams have been looking at that can go after first, do you just go to punish that yep. against Dignitas? I think you do. It's an easy answer. I think especially with the way Dignitas, uh, or with the way CLG was talking about him 
I know Doublelift sometimes exaggerates a little bit, uh, but you can absolutely tell that Dignitas wants to protect Golden Glue, yeah. and CLG wants to attack him. Well, we'll see how close they can get to those front lines in the early part of the game. See if any true vision is being bought out here, but no. Looks like they keep it with the trinkets, though it'll be long lasting. Dorn's blades for the top lane as well on both sides. Yeah, it could be a fighting Dorn's blades, or they're just using those Dorn's blades to jungle early. That's uh, true. These teams have a somewhat defeatist attitude into running into the two or three v one lane. And that looks the way we're going to be formating these, which will which will actually isol isolate the mid lane a fair bit. For Link and Golden Glue. As we mentioned in the pregame, Golden Glue only averaging fifty two CS yeah. in ten minutes. The league average, of course, being 72. So we'll track that. It, you'd, you'd think it would actually be higher because everyone says that break point is, oh, keep 10 CS a minute. That's actually not what pro games average at. Uh, they're much closer to 76, 77 is the, really the top you'll see just because of the rotations and because yep. these guys counter harass each other to prevent them from CSing. Looks like they're putting quite a focus on the bottom side, Dig, going for the invade, but you already see that... Double lift and Aphromoo are hugging that top side, so it looks like we are going to get the two we want to start off. The wards aren't going to be there for the extra vision, so this is all just to kind of get the early gold flowing if they can get to the turret pushes in time. We'll see how they try to organize it. We've been saying the jungler's the one to go top. They'll probably do the same thing. Mm. We'll see what can happen out of that. CLG with the rotations, this should always favor them with this yeah. kind of gameplay. I wonder if CLG is going to share jungle experience between Lee Sin and Trundle, mm. there was an, a very interesting challenger quarterfinal between Complexity Black and Complexity Red, where the top laner and jungler both shared until they were both level two, instead of having the jungler hit level three and the top laner hit level one. Uh, and then they sent all four to the lane, all with two skills in. And they actually were able to shove and kill the inhibitor turret, yeah. instead of just the second tier turret, which most teams end up doing. Not yep, just the standard crazy. Buffets. Yeah, nothing crazy crazy. Dexter is going to be taken out easily this blue for himself. The ward gives them all the coverage they need. And actually, see Crumbs getting himself back into position as well. So the bottom lane pushing in. Nothing really coming from both teams in the early part of the game until they get what they want, which is that first and second turret if possible. And then the gold flows. Who can work with that gold better is what we're really looking at. Like you said, both teams kind of staving off on the fights. They're going to want to hold this off with hard hats on. So here yep. we go to the side lanes. Let's get the push and go. Ooh, we got a little minion. <laughs> he was hoping the end would be a little bit lower than that. Getting things started early. See how Golden Globus Link does. The, the lanes are going to be shoving. Uh, there's actually a... Is that a... It's a four-man. Four, four yep. They're going to toss down to the bottom. Uh, Kiwi Kid level one, but Cruiser just hitting level two. They'll shove very quickly here. Cruiser being able to hypercharge. This actually is quite scale big. No, he didn't even scale up his W. David Toss could be shoving faster than this right now. Cruiser got his gate and his shock blast instead for the escape in case they get collapsed upon. It would be great to have a trundle in that top lane with Frozen Domain down getting attack speed, but it looks like they are just going to keep pressuring on without him, so they're trading even on that, even with the armor uh, champion reduction on the top turret damage, so... Great pushes here, but it's up to that second turret, and who can start to rotate out of that? Golden Glue, low on mana as he tries to keep the lane pushed against Link. It looks like he's been landing a few of his own spears. Still only three on this. Looking at the bottom turret now, it's already going to take be taken down before CLG can get that top. Yeah. So take the toss, cruising along. Just the straight, the straight up trade. Both teams decided this is what they wanted to do, so that is the way it happened. Just letting it kill minions. Double lift. And I'm a cutie pie. I'm a cutie pie actually isolating the gold for himself mm. there. Got all the local experience. And Kiwi Kid is starting his roaming very early, like he likes to. So we do see Nian is level three. So I don't think he's going to be meeting anybody soon. So the level discrepancy between Cruiser and him should not in here. back too much. The party indeed. Doesn't look like Dexter invited too many oh. friends. Oh. Some airmail there from Link on the backside, almost coming up with first blood as Counter Logic Gaming 
rotates everybody through the jungle of Dignitas instead of backing after the second tier turret. Yeah, like we thought in Champs like this is a very rotation heavy game for COG. They're just practicing the crispness. There's a flash, burning another one. This is crazy. When we see other teams doing this right after that bottom second tier is taken, so is Dragon. But CLG has fast rotated from yeah. top lane, and now it's theirs. Preventing the Maybe. Dragon play right there. It's very low mm -hmm. uh, levels right now. So the Dragon does a substantial amount of damage. And this could be an interesting little dancer. Neither team should really be starting this Dragon, because it would mean defeat. CLG has not had the chance to go back and spend this turret gold that they got. We have Cutie Pie with the Scepter coming back into lane, so there's a little bit more damage coming in from Dig on this fight. But like we said, the levels are so low. It's going to be all about this push. Four men in the bottom. Link trying to hold mid, and it looks like Kiwi Kid level two. He just blew his flash on the hook. He's going to be in the wrong spot at the right time for CLG. First blood. CLG moves faster, and they are not afraid to turret dive 4v2. They made sure to get so many wards in before they even tried for that dragon. Behind red buff is what got Kiwi Kid killed there, and they're still trying to put the pressure on. Cutie Pie needs to at least get in range for that experience, but he cannot. Golden Glue also getting pushed out of mid lane since nobody else is there to help him, and he eats one to the face. From Link, Link just destroys him, hits level six first, and just starts pouncing around. You don't usually see solo kills right there, but you could tell Golden Glue with the flash being burned prior, and also going Ignite on Orianna. A lot of Orianna's go barrier does not have the defensive capabilities to stop that one. CLG just starting pandemonium there. Nyan also coming in for it. He knows Kiwi's too. He thought about that for a second, and then they just reassessed the fight and said, we are still on top of this one. Just going out the pillar to give Cutie Pie a little more harass and trouble in his ways. They're going to be back out. Kiwi Kid does have the Sight Stone, so this proves good for Dig. This can hopefully stop CLG always getting into their base. Now the CLG has to back a little breathing room for Dig, but that was bad. Yeah, that was very bad for them. CLG picked up many advantages off that. You can see the huge amount of wards. And CLG just picked up four pinks this early on in the game. Because all the early turrets have been taken down, the vision control becomes even more important, yeah. and it will be very difficult for Dignitas to control these things since they are using their flashes pretty much as they come up again and they're still under level, and the one lane that wasn't getting super rotated on died 1v1. And CLG is almost getting advantages out of this since Dragon didn't take it down. They can pressure more. Dig may not even be able to formulate onto this, so CLG giving themselves more advantages from everything they've already yep. done. There's a nice spear going over. Link's gonna be pushing that mid lane back into Golden Blue. I always like seeing Nidalee players jump away after they throw spears to try and increase the max distance. That's how the Nidalee spear used to work, mm. is it would calculate the damage from when the spear hit to the current location in Nidalee. Now it calculates from the start of the spear throw, but players still do it anyway. COG gets this dragon because of their superior rotations. Old habits die hard. Ooh, trying to get one on that. We've got two so levels on Golden Blue right now. Trying to do that switch fast cougar javelin throw. Still kind of hides it a bit. Ooh, both just missing off the side of the Wraith. I want the big one. You're gonna try to get it. Link gets in there. They know they can toy with that extra few feet of danger. Nothing can really hurt them right now, being so far up. And now that Dexter's on Lee Sin, he can kind of roam right here between red and go to bottom or back to Link if he needs help. So many resources just for Dignitas to stop a red in Whoa. So many. <laughs> he takes a decent amount of poke, but the blue buff on Nidalee keeps them going. All the while this is happening, uh, COD's actually pushing them back with fewer people. Nien is yeah. off having a blast on Trundle. He just got himself some green shoes. Went back and got some Ninja Tabias for himself. War fight. After Moon, not even level six yet. And Crumbs is. You can see how he's pushing out level three. Exactly. After Moon's not level six, but Kiwi Kid's not level four. <laughs> That's an even bigger problem right there. Dig and Toss absolutely dominating. Look at all those pink wards that they have used to push through onto Dignitas. And then a teleport to keep the minion alive. They are going all out on objectives. Do not care about kills. Gonna get this turret. Sending four people to that push lane. Definitely soaked up a little more experience than what CLG got out of their three push. Everybody's a little more healthy as well. The movements have four pink wards now down on that bottom side of the map. Oh, man. And another kill coming in on a golden glue. That's a flash. I don't think he's getting out of this one. Nian puts himself in the fray. Dexter's in there as well. Still has Whoa. his ultimate that gets used. Oh my gosh, Kiwi Kid still level three, takes almost all of his health from one javelin. That wasn't even max range. Riv, this is a CLG team on a mission. 
They were not happy about their two losses thus far in Super Week, and they have cleaned it up overnight. Up pretty much 5,000 gold after this turret goes down, not giving Dignitas an inch. Exactly. Ten minutes in the game, and they start on the mid turret. That first tier is going to be broken out, and the map is now opened up for CLG to roam even that much more. But now we got Nian in the party. His teleport's down, so he's going to stay with this. They're going to take down even that much more until he goes back to the top lane for the split push. This might so be, much. Yeah, and this might be some kind of record for how long into the game do you stay level 3. Kiwi Kid was level 3 at 9 minutes a couple days ago, but it is 10 and a half minutes, and COG has not allowed him to get even to level 4. He can't get close there either. Level 4 comes in, it's not going to help him. He still goes for the flash! Oh, flash initiation level 4, Kiwi Kid! DLG is on the run from that right now, and Dig, they don't even know if they can reinitiate out for what just happened. No, but the unfortunate thing for Dignitas there, because they've been getting so pushed around, the level advantages exist very strongly for CLG, and this early on into the game, it's roughly 500 to 800 gold in stats per level, so this gold lead is just exacerbated by the experience advantage of CLG as well, making them infinitely stronger. Kiwi Kid. Just going off the rail there. Keeps himself safe though. Did not go down for being level four to pretty much right now half of the levels that Link is. So you just imagine how much damage he's gonna receive on the first attack. 5,000 gold in that lead. CLG thinks that that wasn't too much of what should really be happening. And they go ahead and get a nice strong push on, push on mid lane as Nian returns to top. Yeah, and Nian just living off his teleport. You can see CLG backing as a unit one of the most difficult things to do for teams as they try and work towards a stronger team play and rotational game is just the times at which you back. Because everyone gets into habits of wanting to back as soon as they can buy an item, but you lose a lot of map pressure as soon as even one person backs. So they're gonna lose the map pressure anyway, everyone backed at once, and they're trying to make it back before this jerk goes down as a cohesive unit. CLG played that situation perfectly. They didn't even go back after they got the first two turrets that helped them to really control the map altogether. They do lose mid with the perseverance of Dignitas wanting that mid turret. And good on Dig for that flash initiation, giving them some ground, but they gotta be careful. They don't have much ground to work with. That's a very painful spear. You can see Link actually going for his Sorcerer's Shoes before finishing his Athenes on Holy Grail because he wants those spears to hit even harder. It's unthinkable for Dignitas to build magic resistance this early, which is why those spears are hitting so hard. Nian's gonna be back in the top lane, but no, actually he stays. I was gonna say his teleport should be coming up if he's doing that. But it looks like he's just waiting for the rest of the team. They get a call that even though we've warded everything in the bottom, we're gonna start working the top side now. We'll let Double Lift go ahead and push that out. Yeah, and with the way CLG is playing, it's going to be really tough for Dignitas to come back here. No man on Cruiser. Blade back. Kick back. Doing what he can. 3v1 situation. He knew he was down. CLG is putting the piece, pieces in place to always get something out of nothing, really. It was just Nian scaring Cruiser in the face there. Yeah, and this is the... As you saw when the fog was t toggled there, there's no vision anywhere, even within Dignitas' own jungle, which meant this was a big surprise. Aphromu does get the play, which was enough to get Dexter in range for the kick. And they could use all those resources because Dignitas had no map pressure elsewhere. Another nice move by them. Definitely the kind of play CLG needs to have in the playoffs. It's the first time we've actually seen a team on the 2v1 go straight to Dragon, so a little bit of adaptation there on what well, we've been seeing. Especially red side 2v1. Right, They took right. the two turrets and then they were still able to control the Dragon. Which is quite impressive. They'll be getting another one for themselves here, racking up even more gold to the team. You can see 151 going over the link, multiply that out. 24,000 now to 18.1. A little minion just saving that off. You could tell I'm a cutie pie knew their he has to use his ultimate just to nuke down the red buff before a potential steal could come in. He does secure it, but mm -hmm. that means the Ezreal ult is enough to clear waves. He's also far behind on damage. A stacking Bloodthirster for double lift now. No Sheen even. Cutie Pie is trying to get a little bit of HP out of the phage, that movement speed to keep him safe. Hopefully the red buff can trigger some fights in the season game by CLG. Uh, when they actually had Hotshot and they were playing against Curse. Mm -hmm. They had a 4-0 game against them. It was pretty much all rotation heavy. 
This is pretty crazy. No one is level nine even. They're gonna need all five to get this Baron down. The end better be huge. <laughs> yeah, this is actually a real danger if Dignitas collapses on them, which they are. They got spotted a little bit. Dignitas does not have vision on the map, but when you don't see anybody in the lanes, they're only at one spot. Oh, wow. It does go to Dexter. They should be able to turn on this fight, all five of them. The end getting the command shockwave, and they should be able to organize. Cutie Pie now to get himself in some mystic shots as they just fight on Tibbers after finding him. It looks like they're safe on Baron. Dignitas very just hesitant on yeah. anything they're doing. Well, that was a little bit too close for comfort for CLG as well. And Dignitas's mm -hmm. hesitation of going towards there was well warranted considering their abysmal ward control throughout this game because CLG has been dominating them in vision. Uh, but their senses were correct there for Dignitas to check the Baron. It's just Crumbs couldn't get in there for, for a steal. He's not even level 11 yet. Those jumps are very baby-like on Kazix before he has the evolution. <laughs> I do not blame Crumbs for missing that one. Stubbed his toe a little bit there. Coming up on 17 minutes in the game. Like you were saying, the wards, there was about seven to three wards on the map. And those three yeah. wards from Dig only came because they were trying to get to Baron. So it was basically dark everywhere. A 9,000 gold lead will actually cut your wards off the map quite easy. That means the other team has the vision. They're going to start sweepers quite soon. But really, the sweeper is only on to Aframu right now. So. CLG is working with having the vision, knowing they're going to win the fights no matter what happens. And winning the fights no matter what happens is very key for them right now. You can actually see Warden's Mails on Nien and Dexter. They are building up armor, not so much to, you know, withstand Dignitas' damage, but to withstand turret damage, I think. The tanks are going to be wanting to go in and maybe participate in some turret dives as CLG tries to squeeze this one out very quickly. Wow. Oh, going for a relentless pursuit. He throws on the ultimate. Calling is going to be just a little bit. I don't know if he has enough. Double it flashes out of the hit coming in from Cruiser. And they're going to be able to turn this. Ardent Blaze hitting on the side of that one. And he gives himself another kill. 7-0 and the gold lead grows. There's the flash forcing another one. This turret's going down. They do need that armor for turret diving a little bit, chat. It's going to be another hit up. Nian's in the bottom lane. CLG is so far ahead this game. They're three or one three one ing And now to the top lane after they don't even need to go for mid. Seven to zero in kills. They have a shutout on that. And they look to take an inhibitor turret without Dignitas responding. They're kind of just walking around in their base. CLG is on pace for a flawless victory here. Seven kills to zero. And they are just everywhere when compared to Dignitas. And once they have a lead of this magnitude, they can keep taking larger and larger risks. That's why they're all still in front of the base. They want more. Still going very hard onto this. Double lift, not even having a chance to go back and finish the pieces of his Triforce. CLG probably has quite a bit of money they're working with yeah. right now, but can't even, they just want to get these structures down because they know they have that advantage. This is almost like the point of going back and wanting to buy, but they know they can get so much more even without it. Exactly, they want to buy because they're actually collectively sitting on about 6,600 gold right now. Jeez. But the pressure they would lose uh, is a little bit more than that, which is why they're sticking around and trying to get as many advantages off of the rest of this Baron buff before they go back and shop. If they go back and shop now, the rest of the Baron buff would decay and they wouldn't get use out of it. Right now, the gold in their pockets is made up for by the gold value of that Baron buff. Well, looking for another inhibitor in the end, pretty much uncontested on this bottom side because they have to focus with all of their members even two resources being pulled off just for one every time. The numbers are in favor of Counter Logic Gaming. Even if Dignitas brings more to the fight, Kiwi Kid gets one hit on a double lift. He's barrier and flashes down for the previous engagement. Gets himself a little too close there. CLG is going to have to back off for a second, but all the meanwhile. All the meanwhile, and Hibber number two goes down. It did cost double lift his life because he burned his flash and barrier in the previous engagement, but look at this. The destruction continues. Nine turrets, and this could be the third inhibitor sub 20 minutes. This could be grounds for a 20 minute surrender if Dignitas doesn't want to withstand this push. Well, it looks like they're going to have to do what they can to put up the last bit of Riot Shield as CLG is not leaving the base, even with Baron off and a double lift down. Spear's still coming out from Link. Good disengage from the Pillar of the end. They're really not worried about what they can bring to the table. They don't have a Talisman of Ascension yet. They're only working off of Home Guards, and not even everybody has those. You can see how far behind Dignitas is. They're really just getting started with their builds while CLG is getting ready to finish 
the game. This back was just CLG putting a line of how far they were willing to push their limits here. They probably could have stuck around and then tried to push once the three waves of super minions arrived at the base. But because they were collectively sitting on about 8,000 gold, they decided to shop. The death cap is rather important at this point in the game. I mean, just... This is an 11,000 gold lead in 20 minutes. Uh, it's too much for Dignitas to realistically handle. CLG should just be able to push this in with three waves of super minions. And, I mean... Just the super minions, even without CLG people there, is a full-time job for Dignitas to keep back right now. Because they don't have the items required to clear these monstrous minions pushing into their base. CLG looking to end the game here fast. Look at how hard it is for them to kill one. The auras work on each other for the super minions. So when there's two of them up, they are oh, even man. stronger. And now when they all come together, these turrets are toast. Damage is already on to the Nexus. Dignitas doing the rest that they can as Cutie Pie takes just about all of his HP. Gets a shield and the barrier down. The kick did not kill him or would not have killed him. The Nexus turret falls. The Nexus is going to go down. And CLG looks to win the fastest game of the North American Spring Split in 2014. They're going for the kills though. They're letting the minions do the work. They're going to be able to get these kills nine to one. The Nexus falls at 21.